Hey guys, it's me, Zombly, here with Strike Fighters 2. That's right, the long-awaited series. The only reason any of you ever come to my channel, it's Strike Fighters 2. No, I'm kidding. Um, some of you come to my channel for other things. I'm just, I'm teasing you. It's Strike Fighters 2. We're back. I had a bit of a break from it, and uh, to tell you the truth, I'm probably, well, not that I've ever been skilled at flying, but I'm probably even worse now because it's been so long. Um, I personally really enjoy mercenary mode campaigns, uh, just because it gives me the extra element of money management, and, uh, I don't know what it is about me and, like, quote-unquote business sims, but there it is. I just, I cannot, cannot get enough of them. So, anyway, unfortunately, I think this time around, well, I say unfortunately, and I don't mean that, um, the majority vote wanted me to do a country campaign, and that was that, uh, you know, I, I choose a country and I stick with them. So I think that's what we'll end up doing. I'll probably go with the U.S. And I think we're going to do the 1968 campaign in uh, Europe, which is, I think it's called Red Hammer. Anyways, that's my plan, at least. So um, I'll be flying the F-100 Super Sabre, which is a big, heavy, terribly unmaneuverable plane that I just fly awful because... I, I'm more of the type of person that really enjoys the turn fighters. I like fighters like the MiGs and the Mirages and, and stuff that were developed with high amounts of maneuverability in mind, whereas you can flip them around and turn them and you don't get, uh, you know, at your sharp AOAs, you don't have massive loss of uh, speed and or stall fits. Um, the Super Saber is not that. It is a big, heavy machine with a ginormous engine, and it's... It, okay, so it's like trying to put a drag racer onto an IndyCar track. Let me put it that way. Um, of course, the Formula One racer is going to be able to zip around with no problem. You try to take and make a drag racer turn those tight hairpin corners, it's not going to work. So that's the flying style I'm going to have to try to wrap my head around is that I'm in a big drag racer so I need to do the boom and zoom tactics where you get above your enemy and you dive on them and you find ways to essentially keep yourself going in a straight line no matter what and I hate to say it but I'm kind of bad at that um, so <laughs> I guess I'm like preemptively apologizing because this will probably be a short lived pilot but uh, yeah let's go ahead and we'll start a new pilot um, let's see his last name will be now I know mercenary mode is backwards whereas your first name was technically your call sign I don't think it works that way with the country campaigns tell you the truth I've never played a whole lot of country campaigns I've always played mercenary mode in fact that is the only reason why I bought this game was to play mercenary mode so this is kind of almost like a blind LP for me on this uh, but let's see uh, last name um you know what? It's probably overused, but uh, let's let's go ahead and do it. Uh, he'll be Mick Squiggles. If you've been watching my um, Silent Hunter 4 Wolves of the Pacific playthrough, you'll know that his name is Jim Mick Squiggles in that as well. And so his call sign, of course, is just going to be Mick Squiggles. Captain Mick Squiggles. Okay, so we have Jim McSquiggles McSquiggles, because <laughs> that's so friggin' creative. Okay, so who, let's see, who strikes me as a McSquiggles? <laughs> kind of that guy, actually, right off the bat. Um, let's see here. Oh, that is not a, well, that's a Mrs. McSquiggles. Um, what's 10 look like? Okay, so that was that guy. Let's try 8. <laughs> I like his, his mustache, his stash of awesomeness there. Okay, seriously, who is a Jim McSquiggles? Six is very unidentifiable. Come on, find me a Jim McSquiggle. Wow, that guy just looks tired. Like, <sighs> I told you not to do that. Like, that's, seriously, that's like the disappointed dad look. Like, when you do something really fucking stupid and your dad, like, is just standing there looking at you like, <sighs> I can't believe you're the sperm that won. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, I like that that guy is like, wow, he's like trying to be... Iceman, but there was no Iceman at the time that photo was taken, for sure. That's an oldie. Um, da, 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 da. Seriously, give me a McSquiggles. Who looks like McSquiggles? <laughs> there it is. What? What did you say? Yeah, that's Jim McSquiggles right there. We got it. That is Captain Jim McSquiggles. As I'm getting more and more Twitter alerts or text messages. I don't know, but okay. So anyways, let's go ahead and start a new campaign. Um... So yeah, we're gonna do red ha uh, red hammer, which we're gonna do a redhead. All right, no, um, wow, wow, back it down, man. 
tone it down. No. <laughs> okay, so anyways, we're going to do Campaign Red Hammer. It's going to take place August 28th, 1968. We are definitely going to be of the United States Air Force for this one. Um, and I think I'll go... Okay, now wait a minute here. This says it's from 1965. So the F-100C Super Saber says it's from 1965 which implies that it's more up-to-date, yet the F-100D, which in terms of model numbers implies it's the most up-to-date, says it's from 64. That confuses my tiny little Let's Player brain. Um, I guess I'll go with the C, the 100C, because it says it's from 65, and our only choice is the 121st, um, don't know what TF is, uh, something Fighter Squadron, DC, maybe from Washington, DC. I don't know what that means. And then ANG, I'm assuming, is Air National Guard. I'm sure a lot of you will know. Hell, most of you watching this probably have relatives or have had relatives that served in that particular branch. So be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I love being educated on things like this. I love learning more about uh, aircraft and military history and stuff like that because. Unfortunately, a lot of the way military history works out is it's, it's usually gruesome and horrible, but I, I thoroughly, wholeheartedly, 100% believe deep down that those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it, so that's why I'm so interested in history. Fun fact of the day, um, so yeah, I've, I would like to learn about the 121st TFS. I don't understand what TFS could stand for. I don't know if D.C. denotes that they're from District of Columbia, like Washington, D.C., like... Um, and then ANG, I know, has to be Air National Guard. So, anyways, that's our squadron. That's who we're going to be. Our campaign difficulty is going to remain at normal because I'm a weenie and I will not do hard. Weapon supply will be normal. Um, I suppose I could do limited or something, but normal will give us a good balance. Um, unlimited, obviously, is like the super easy cheat mode. You'll never run out of supply. Limited starts you out with far too less. And then normal is the perfect Goldilocks setting. So let's take a look uh, as I fight with a rogue hick up here. It was an epic battle, but I won. Um, anyway, August 21st, 1968, Soviet Army, Soviet, Soviet, Soviet Army invades Czechoslovakia to prevent reformist elements from taking control of the country. 200,000 Soviet troops supported by 2,000 tanks enter the country overnight. When the Western nations do nothing to challenge the takeover, General Secretary Brezhnev is encouraged to expand Soviet sphere of influence further west. His next stop, liberate West Germany and unite two Germanys under a single Soviet-style communist communist government. NATO forces scramble to defend Europe. So kind of like, it sounds like the shit has hit the fan. Um, almost mirroring, uh, I think, what was actually happening sometime around, I think it was, uh, yeah, because there was East and West Germany, and I think this uh, there was a very close situation in real life, I, thi I think. I, d I don't know. I'm going to have to go through and, and do a little bit more research, but I think something like this almost occurred. Um, obviously, we've got uh, the Soviet army, which is defunct. There is no Soviet Union anymore. But uh, So yeah, this was closer to, I think something like this happened in the 80s, just before the Berlin Wall fell. I think the Berlin Wall fell down um, on my date of birth in 1989. Um, well, not my specific date, my year of birth, I should say. So, 89 is when that went down. So, And I think just before that, sometime in the early 80s, I think something very similar almost happened. But that's just probably me making things up. I don't know. But anyways, we'll go ahead and accept. And, uh, yeah, this will be Jim's campaign. Let's accept. Okay, so August 29th, 1968, at 10.57 in the morning, the, R the Rhine Main Air Base near Ruselheim, or Ruselheim, West Germany, Central Europe. I'm going to butcher all these names because they're in languages that I'm not good at, specifically German. Although Duolingo is an application for your cell phone that's a lot of fun. I've been trying to learn German on that. It doesn't, doesn't work very well for me, as you can tell. I still got my like horrible American accent, like, Ruselham. Like, it just it sounds awful. But anyway, let's see what's going on today. Uh, we are going to strike a strategic target lo located in Druwitz Air Base. Destroy the enemy runway in the target area. Our call sign is going to be Tuna. And we're going to have two F-100C Super Sabres. Okay. Well, hopefully I'm allowed to edit the roster. Oh my god, I am still allowed to edit my roster. Thank the lord. Okay. So I need a person with a lot of air-to-ground kills. Jack Sears. Holy crap, First Lieutenant Jack Sears is crazy awesome at ground attack. 
Um, he's gotten one air-to-air -air kill in 10 combat missions, and he's got an 11 air-to-ground kills. So that means in one mission, he got one air-to-air -air kill and an air-to-ground kill. And then the rest of all of his missions have been at least one air-to-ground kill each. That's impressive. So he's going to be my... Uh, no, he's not going to be my wingman. He will be the third on our squadron that I'm, I'm going to take four of us. He'll be the third. Um, I would ideally like to keep three and four as bombers, and then me and um, a wingman as uh, just fighter cover. Because I'm not good at, at uh, air-to-ground attacks in this game. Um, generally, I'm just bad at air-to-ground attacks in any flight simulator, well, combat flight simulator. So I would ideally like to stick and keep myself to a fighting role. Um, but it definitely looks like Jax here is going to be part of the bombing group. Um, so let's see here. Who's going to come up with me? Who's got a lot of air-to-air -air kills? I would like to take uh, James Dennis. So Jim and James. So Jim is going to be Tuna 1-2. He's going to be my uh, second. And then... Uh, now, I, I'm, I'm setting this up. Like I said, I'm blind when it comes to uh, the actual country campaign. So I'm setting this up as if it was mercenary mode. We could all just be forced to load out. I've never checked that out before. Um, so I might not be able to change the loadout. I might be stuck as an air-to-ground bomber. And then I'm just taking, like, four bombers needlessly. But, okay, so let's see here. Who else has got a couple of... Air -to oh, looks like... Dan Jameson's got a lot of air-to-ground kills as well, so, okay, he's going to be 1-4. Okay, so 3 and 4 are going to be our bombers, ideally, and then myself and my wingman, James Dennis, are going to be uh, cover. So, all right, let's go ahead, and uh, now that we've got tuna uh, tuna flight set up, <laughs> tuna, now that we got tuna, tuna sandwich, oh, that sounds, actually, I'm kind of hungry, that sounds good. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our loadout. Uh, can I change my, I can... I can't change any of that, though. Okay, that's fine. I don't want bombs right now. Um, no bombs. I will take some drop tanks. Actually, negative. Hold on. Let's take a look at the map. How far are we flying? Uh, yeah, that is going to be one hell of a flight, actually. That's quite a ways away. So, yeah, okay. We will definitely be taking drop tanks. So no bombs for me, one drop tank, and uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, ooh, the AIM-9E is a possibility. Four of them? Fuck yeah. How many do we got of those? And I love that it doesn't cost us money. This is somebody else's foot in the bill for once. Woot. Okay, we've got a lot of AIM-9Es. Okay, so I'll take a bunch of AIM-9Es and a couple of drop tanks for myself. My wingman, Mr. Dennis here. Same setup. I don't want him with any bombs or anything like that. He can go ahead and take four AIM-9Es and a couple of drop tanks. So, boom, done and done there for me and him. Now, here's the guy that needs to carry all the bombs. He needs all the bombs. So he's got a couple of those and a couple of those. I might consider giving him some rockets. Um, two Lao 32. Uh, yeah, let's give him a couple of rocket pods and then... The last man in the squadron can go ahead and keep the M117, 750s. So, okay, we're all loaded out. So the second uh, flight, or the second group of tuna flight is going to be our bomber group. So for all intents and purposes, we really need to keep an eye on three and four. But, uh, alrighty, so we should be set up now. So I'm going to go ahead and mash that fly button, and I will see you guys as I'm about to take off on the runway. I'm really unfamiliar with trying to fly the 100C Super Saver. It's been a long time, so bear with me. It might get a little janky. <laughs> but until then, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Alright, well, we were cleared for takeoff. Um, the unfortunate thing is, is I forgot to uh, set up uh, Joy to Key, which is a, uh, a program I use to uh, use the mouse controls for the hat switch, so unfortunately, I'm going to actually have to have a hands on the mouse as I'm, like, wiggling straight down the runway here. So, I have no ability to look using my hat switch. I could set it up in the game, but it's not as precise as using Joy to Key, so I've already screwed the pooch couple of seconds into uh, flying here, and I've already screwed the pooch. I also think I rotated far too soon with this big fat bird. Yeah, I'm about to go off the runway doing a giant wheelie. Come on. Get in the air. Oh, okay. Tail strike. That wasn't good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got this, everybody. We got this. We're okay now. We're alright. I think. We're not alright. 
I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Okay. Well then. There it is. Um, let's make sure we can get our flight airborne. Let's take a look at the map here. It's very convoluted. Okay, so familiarization is a thing. It's important. Um, is there flaps? I could really use some flaps right now. This thing's not climbing very well. Oh well. Um, Righto then. Okay. Take a look. Alright, well, um, not much else to do but wait for everybody to get into formation and then fly to our uh, desired waypoint as I shake around all over the place. I am still using my old joystick that uh, is kind of messed up, so that's why the uh, aircraft's kind of yawing back and forth. It's got a constant rudder input, and I don't know how to fix it. I've calibrated it, I've tried to turn down all sorts of the control sensitivities, so I'm just going to be a little bit shaky on the... Uh, on the way here, until I can get the money saved up to get another joystick, I think uh, this is just going to be a thing that happens now. It's not bad, though. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and fly on out of here. Um, it looks like my aircraft is good and messed up now because of my tail strike. That might be part of the reason why it's also kind of weird. I don't think I should be smoking like that. This is already off to a horrible start, me and my tail strike. But yeah, anyway, I will be back when the shit hits the fan, so until then, I will see you guys in a little while. We'll just keep uh, nursing this damaged aircraft. I'm like 100% certain now that is part of my problem, is the aircraft is all over the place. But yeah, if you look there, um, here, I'll see if I can get in close. See my uh, my turn and slip indicator? It's kind of all over the place as soon as I touch the, uh, the joystick. See how it just starts going to town? And I can't really fix that. Um, I don't know what to do about it, so we'll just have to deal with it. It doesn't really affect me from flying, so... Anyway, I'll be back uh, when we get engaged with some enemies, so I'll see you guys in a little while. Till then. Alright, well, we got some bogeys in the area, it says, and uh, we are nearing targets, so uh, here's what's going to happen. Wingman is going to uh, basically cover me, and then Flight 1 is going to engage ground. Go for it. I'm going to drop tanks. Oops. Not what I intended to do. Control D. Fuel tanks jettisoned. Okay, let's take a look, make sure they're there. Alright, it's going to be really hard for me to engage in combat. Uh, just because of the way the plane's handling, and because I have no ability to look around. Not the way we want to start our first episode. Um, okay, wingman. Go ahead and drop your tanks. Okay, maybe he already did. That would be the reason for negative. Okay. Flight 1 drop tanks. There you go. Where's the MiG? Okay, they're already circling around on us. I've fucked around too long and they're gonna screw us over. It's time to try to turn this thing. Yikes. Where's he at? There he is. Okay, that was a bit of a hard corner. So I'm just going to rely on F4, which is your padlock view, basically. Let's see if I can't uh, speed us up a little bit and see if I can't drop a sidewinder on him. It did sound like it locked. That's a, that's a loud growl, so I'm going to send one. Off the rail it goes. Switch back to our 20mm. See what happens. If we get real lucky. Shaking around because my, my rudder is just all over the place. Could be because I damaged my plane, too. It doesn't look like that Sidewinder tracked at all. Okay. How about uh, there? Looking in my mirror to make sure nobody's on us. So let's see what we got going on here. That's a good lock. Send it. Oh, it missed just barely, but that's okay. We're catching up to him too fast is what it was. So I'm switching back to 20 mil. Let's see if we can't get him. Oh boy. That's harsh. That's real harsh. Okay, here we go. There he is. Goodbye, buddy. Let's see if we can't get a look at him. Alright. Well, let's make sure I don't hit the pavement. Let's see if we can't lock up somebody else. I did get one. Yeah. Go me. Alright. Here's our next guy. 
I don't see anybody else. That's the problem right now. Okay, I don't know where my group is. Where is everybody? Okay, so Tuna and them are back up the opposite direction of us. Okay, so it sounds like they're, uh... Got a bit going on there. There's my kill right there. I'm very happy about it. I'm surprised I was able to sneak in behind that MiG like that. Okay, one, two's off. So it sounds like two is engaged. Um, cover me. I need him to watch my back for uh, fighters. Go ahead and control that. Uh, vector to target. Air target. Right, one o'clock, one five miles. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, okay. I want to get back on course and rejoin my group. Because there could be more fighters over that way. I think I got distracted by just one guy. So, I'm going to try to fly out that way towards the airfield. Like I said, I can't really do much. That's a little bound. Doing okay otherwise, I think. Alright, well, uh, they're probably not going to be happy with me because of my fucking tail strike, but... Seems like the plane's holding together, sort of. I've never seen an a engine look that dark and just awful. That's, uh, that is one messed up plane. Oh boy, I think that was an enemy. Or was that my wingman? I think that was probably my wingman. Let's see if I can get a look at him. I can't see back that far. About up there, negative. Okay, well then. I'm just going to assume that was my guy, so let's go ahead and kick on the fire a little bit and see if we can't get over somewhere. I don't know where the fuel thing is on this. <laughs> Do I have a fuel? Okay, back to the waypoint though properly. I don't know where my fuel indicator is on the Super Saber. It's been a little too long. Oh, I think somebody is shooting at me. I just got the red text and I looked in my mirror just in time to see a missile streak passed. I think I shut off the afterburner just in time. So yeah, this is definitely he's gonna zip past me on that side, so let's turn back into him real quick. Like I said, unfortunately I don't have a hat switch to look around, so I'm sorry about that. Get a little more gas. Okay, there he is. He's flipped right around in front of us. Lucky me. Let's go ahead and get a missile on him. Using up a lot of fuel on my afterburners right now. It won't lock. That locked. Whoa, my god. That was almost a disaster, wasn't it? He's back behind us. Can I do a split S real quick? I think I've lost far too much speed. Like I said, I'm not used to this big, heavy-ass boat trying to fly through the air. Okay, he's already got the drop on me. Is he making a head-on pass? Might be. Let's try to lock him up again. I'm also going to ask for... Uh, some help here, because I think... No, I, I already screwed up. Flight 1 needs to continue to engage ground. Sorry. I just let him pass me, because I was busy trying to command my squad. Let's get Afterburner back on, try to speed up. Okay, that is definitely a friend in front of me. Man, I'm real low. Got Afterburner full bore, and it's not really doing much for this thing to pick up speed. I'm also trying to keep an eye on my mirrors. Lock. Lock. Lock him up. I need to tell my wound man to attack my target. He's the guy I need to be engaging air, not group three. I need three and four to continue to hit that primary target. Okay, there we go. We got a bit of a lock now. I'm going to wait for him to pull straight. And off the rail. I really hope that doesn't lock up my friend. That might have been a dangerous thing to do. There he is. Okay, so that missile did hit him. It was a really bad choice on my part to send one right after my, uh, <laughs> right behind my friend there. That could have gone real wrong. My wingman there, Dennis, could have gotten a tailpipe full of missile and splashed that guy. Sorry, dude. Sucks to be you. Okay, so where's the next one? I think there is an next one. There is someone. Looks like Buick. So we've got another flight that's currently fighting with us. So maybe that wasn't my wingman. 
using the map there, it looks like it was somebody totally different. Don't want afterburner right now, I just want to head. I'm heading away. Alright. Come on now. Let's make sure we're navigating properly here. Go to the waypoint. Go to the waypoint. Yeah, what I need to do, I think... I thought I had calibrated my joystick and fixed it enough, because I had gotten it working for Flight Simulator, but I think what I'll do to end up fixing it... I should be going the right way now, correct? Sort of. Just about. I need to put the big arrow to the north, just about. Or well, not north, but straight ahead. Okay. So it sounds like my guys are still fucking some shit up. Very happy about that. We're on course towards the airfield that we need to be at, so we'll just wait for that. But anyways, what I think I need to do with the joystick to prevent this uh, whole, like, wiggle wobble shit is to uh, just go ahead and... Because it's a twist rudder axis on my stick. <laughs> as terrible as that sounds. It's a twist axis on my stick, if you know what I mean. But, uh, ew. Anyway. Um, oh, shit, we got more guys over there. Those friendlies. They are taking AA fire, so I'm going to assume they're friendly. -yi. <laughs> that was my panic sound. It helps me in times of great duress. Uh, it's just to make weird noises like that. Anyways, um, it's a twist rudder on the joystick, so that's what's broken, basically. And so I think if I just disable rudder and bind it to, uh, like, a key on my keyboard, we should be fine. So if I do, like, Z and X, no ECM is on board. Yeah, I need to rebind some keys. So anyway... That's what's going to end up happening, I think. Let's talk to Red Crown, though. What's our what's our mission status? The mission is in progress. Okay. Uh, nobody's on my tail. I will accept that. Still haven't spotted any aircraft at the moment. So, like I said, it's hard for me to look around and really see what's going on. There is somebody over there, over that township, but I'm pretty sure I'm surrounded by a group of friendlies right now of a different flight. Okay, so my guys are still screwing some shit up over there. I should be able to see the airfield soon, I would hope, unless I'm directly over it. I am directly over it, I think. Is that an enemy airfield that I'm flying over? It is definitely the enemy airfield. Okay, slow it down just a hair. really don't know what I can do. Okay, yeah, so those are my guys down there taking care of business. Let's get those air brakes off real quick. Don't need them no more. Might have slowed myself down way too much, especially because I'm entering a turn. But basically, I'm just going to orbit the area because I'm useless at this point. I mean, what's new, right? But no, I'm, I'm useless in terms of ground attack. I suppose I got some 20 millimeters left. I could try throwing at them. we got to destroy the airfield, though. Come on, guys, put some bombs in the center of the field. really know what they're doing. Got my nose up too high, I think. I'm not making a level turn. That could be bad for us. Like I said, this thing you gotta keep basically as straight as possible. As fast as possible. I accidentally burped my afterburner there. I wanna try to save something. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and run in with 20 millimeters, see if I just can't do some extra damage, because why the fuck not, right? Should be easy with my rudder going wacky. those on them. I don't really think that did anything at all. We're off. Come on, guys. Hurry up. Let's let's complete this mission. Probably going to be bingo fuel here soon, especially because I can't see. Everybody's ditched their tanks. Me and two ditched them to engage air. Three and four I told to ditch tanks so they could get better ground attacks, but uh, I really don't know what my fuel's looking like. Seriously? Fuel quantity. There it is. Okay. I think the center tank is the main tank. That's the one we got to watch out for. And it is a little bit low. Not going to lie. Okay, let's circle back around real quick. Hope you guys are ready for a long episode. Really don't know what else I could do at this point, considering there's no enemies around. I think they're just... I don't know. Seven. Mission status, please. Jesus. Well, where's the main field, then? I don't know what my guys are attacking. I've lost Tuna completely. I 
think I'm heading towards the field they should be attacking. Okay, flight one, seriously, engage ground. They're not attacking the proper target, apparently. That's great. Leave it to the fucking AI. Well, more so leave it to me to trust the AI. That would be the first mistake. Uh, that was watched around. I'm not going to run in on that. Never mind. All right, well, I'm going to head back. Um, there's really nothing else I can do. Um, I'm going to have two... Or, no, this is the other flight. Continue to engage, engage ground. Wingman, rejoin me. Bingo here shortly, too. Okay, well, uh, let's take a look with the mouse so I can figure out the proper waypoint to head to. And yeah, I think I'll cut the video here. I'll keep you guys updated as we come back. Um, I've got one missile left, I think, so... And a little bit of... I'm not sure how much mil uh, 20 millimeter we got left. Some cannon rounds, so... I'm still combat dangerous, but ground attack, not so much. So, anyways... We'll go ahead and uh, make our merry way back to base, at least me and the wingman will, and then hopefully 3 and 4 can figure their shit out and get the proper target attacked. So, anyways, I'll see you guys as that happens, till then. <laughs> well, um, funny story, you guys, I, uh, I ran out of fuel. <laughs> Um, there's some AA up ahead, but after that I think I might be on the right side of the lines to punch out. So, uh, yeah, I'm a big expensive glider right now, which I'm sure the government really appreciates. Um, the only issue is, is I was running in Afterburner so long because uh, there's AA all over the place. And I've lost uh, touch with the rest of my squad. And, uh, yeah, I don't know where the hell the rest of Tuna Flight is. I told them to RTB, so my only assumption is that they headed back the same direction I did. There's AA over here somewhere, according to the map. I'm directly behind Wolfpack, and if I'm not mistaken, Wolfpack might even be after that AA. At least it looks like Wolfpack 1-4, so... Uh, yeah, after that, I, I really, really hope that I'm close enough to friendly lines that I can punch out be okay. Um, I'm quite a ways away from home, though. I don't know what's friendly controlled and what isn't. I don't see a lot of blue on the map other than people that are already flying, so I'm gonna try to glide this out as long as it'll possibly go. And then, uh, after that, <laughs> I'm just gonna have to punch out. Because I don't trust my ability to land on uh, the grass in this thing very well. In fact, I'm pretty sure if your wheels make contact with anything... Yeah, there goes the... Uh, oh, who's shooting? Who's shooting and why? Nobody's shooting at me. That was from my squad, though, so apparently they're under fire as well. Maybe they're directly, like, behind me somewhere. Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay, there's Tuna. They're right on the forested area. Great, so they're under fire as well. I'm next to Wolfpack. I wonder if I can see him. Wolfpack is supposedly out that direction. I don't know. I've lost a lot of speed, though, and uh, the little winglet things up front there, I, I forget what they're called, but they extend forward when you're at very low speeds to increase the lift of the wing so you don't uh, stall out and crash. So uh, that's a very bad sign when they show up. Uh, but anyways, as I was saying, I'm pretty sure once your wheels touch anything other than the asphalt of home base, you're pretty well done for. Like, uh, right now, I'd say I'd have, in real life, I'd be very confident looking at all these fields all over the place. I mean, it might mess up the undercarriage a little bit, but there's so many open fields and roadways that in real life, I'm pretty sure I could land this thing... Well, not me specifically, but I'm pretty sure a real pilot could land in any one of those fields or on the roadways and be just fine. But, uh, are those streetlights or trees? That's an interesting detail. Anyway, unfortunately, it looks like uh, I'm about ready to punch out, so here goes nothing. Let's pray that uh, I don't get captured. Out I go. And watch the big old saber spin in. And, uh, oh, it switched immediately to an enemy AA gun. That's a good sign. So, yeah, anyway, I'll be back uh, with the results of this as we zoom across the landscape here. I don't know what button I hit, but there it is. Oh, okay, I wonder if that's uh, one of my guys. Can't tell. It's another Super Saber in the air. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I will be back with the results. See you guys then. 
Well, that's utter bullshit, I cry out. Utter bullshit. We'll start another campaign next episode. <laughs> Why, you might ask? Well, let's take a look at the remarks section. Second Lieutenant McSquiggles was captured and is being held as a prisoner of war. This campaign is finished. Yeah, fuck you too, game. <laughs> the mission was aborted. Primary target was not damaged. Yeah, I did abort the mission because I was useless. Um, so I learned a lesson today, and that is do not rely on the AI to bomb anything on the ground. Um, they just started picking off all kinds of shit. They were getting enemy ground kills left and right, but the issue was is none of it was our primary target. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of this one. I'm now a prisoner of war, hopefully to be appreciated at, or repreciated or repatriated. I don't remember what it's called. At the end of the war, that's not going to happen because the minute I click accept, it's going to be like, oh, you suck. The UN and the United States lost. The Soviet Union is now your daddy. It's like, wow, that sucks. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, there it is. Um... Yep, see, as the NATO ground forces retreat across the Rhine, NATO air forces resort to the use of tactical nuclear weapons to try to stop the Soviet army. Soviet forces retaliate in kind, and the war goes full nuclear, see. So I just, through losing out and, like, running my tanks out of fuel, I caused a full nuclear war. Thank you, McSquiggles, for turning the entire planet into a game of Fallout. Um, so anyways, there's Strike Fighters 2. Um, I'm going to start another American campaign, same scenario, same uh, 100 Super Saber, because I really do enjoy that plan. I want to fly it a little bit more than just one episode, but I think after that one, if I end up dying or something else happens, I'll go and move on to another country and a different airplane. So thank you guys so much for joining me with this episode of Strike Fighters 2. Sorry I got off to a bit of a crummy start there. Um, I forgot to use Joy to Key to use my hat switch more effectively and uh, still having problems with my joystick, but I think I can have those resolved by the second episode. At least I'm going to really hope I can. I mean, what kind of non-professional Let's Player would I be if I did unprofessional thing? Wait a minute, no. <laughs> so anyways, thank you guys so much. If you want to see more of this, you can always like and subscribe. That'll give you notifications to when there are more videos like this popping up. They should come up every Saturday. Um, my current intention is to have at least one episode of Strike Fighters 2 and one episode of B-17 Returns up every Saturday. Um, you can refer to my channel schedule uh update video sort of thing somewhere on the main page somewhere over there in the internet's webs thing that everybody likes to use um but anyways this outro has run on too long i really appreciate you guys coming to my channel watching my videos and leaving me comments and stuff it's uh, it's really cool to be able to provide you guys with some entertainment so thank you so much and i'll see you on the next video till then bye bye